Hi everyone and welcome to Tasso Show and today we are going to play Igurashi When We Cry Kai and this will be the first episode of that uh, part of the franchise because as you know Igurashi When We Cry is actually cut into two, two big sections the first one that was just named Igurashi When We Cry which is from episode 1 to episode 4 which I did game preview of all of them so far and then you have Igurashi When We Cry Kai which actually means answer if I understood properly so it will be the answer arcs before it was the question arc so now we're gonna start to understand what really happened in Inamizawa and this one if I understood properly is named Meakashi I think that's how it is. That's the episode 5. So we're gonna get started. Meakashi, beloved cutth cutthroat. Eye opening chapter. Welcome to the world of Igurashi when they cry Kai. We find. I don't know if it's Kai or Kai actually. I will say Kai just to be safe. We finally reach the halfway point. From the viewpoint of a protagonist, Try to find the truth behind the tra tragedy that unfolds. The difficulty is very high. It won't be easy to comprehend the motive of a perpetrator. Perpetrator. Gonna take a screenshot. And let's get started with Meakashi. <laughs> We're probably gonna play for 30 minutes, Big Max. So like that you get a little bit an idea. She dropped her beads in the sand, so the girl cried. For 100 years, the girl searched the sand. They might be in the ocean, not the sand, so the girl cried. For 100 years, the girl searched the ocean. They might be... I knew they would go too fast. I should have gone faster. So obviously this is a work of fiction. We just saw what uh, Bernd Kant's tell. Uh, did it's always like Ben Castell always have those little poem every at every beginning of each game um, You can still see it <laughs> So I'm gonna reread it after that video All right, let's get started here seven keys were attached to the keychain Without knowing which key was the correct one I had to go by instinct and try every key one by one on average, I'd reach the correct key with 3.5 attempts. It will be fortunate if I could open the lock within the first three keys. And it'd be unfortunate if I didn't. I had to think of a worst case scenario, getting the right key only on the very last attempt. I fought with my nervousness. My head ached from it. I put the key in and turned it. I just needed to repeat that small procedure several more times, but I couldn't stop shaking. Damn. Even a three-year-old kid can do something this easy. So am I more childish than a three-year-old? Whatever. I don't care if I'm clumsy. I just need to try all these keys. Even in the worst case scenario, the lock will open on the seventh try. No way. Reality isn't always the same as math. What happened was worse than my worst case scenario. None of the keys worked at all. I could feel the blood draining from my brain. Did I get the wrong set of keys? No. I definitely see a faint marking that says this set is from this door. Am I just reading it wrong? Should I go back to the key cabinet to look for the right one? That would mean a great loss of time. Just by being here, I'm already risking so much. Something that could ruin everything might happen at any moment. If I can't open this lock, do I have to go back to the administration office? If there were no other choice, it would be a waste of time to spend another second here. The administration office wouldn't necessarily be empty at this time. Somebody might come in. 
I won't be able to look for the right key if that happens. I stood up quickly, as if electrified. I was almost in a panic, and so felt the urge to move. My instinct pushed me. I have to go back there as quickly as possible. It's dangerous to be here, and it's also dangerous if somebody comes into the administration office. I cooled my head, making it as chilly as possible to repress my fear. Calm down, Xion. Mia wouldn't panic in this situation. Alright, I was just wondering which I could be. And here we have the truth. It was Xion. So, for people who didn't watch any of the previous uh, game preview or don't know anything about that uh, franchise, there's a couple of characters that are extremely important. Five of them, well, I would say even more than five, but five of them will be very important. One of them is Keiichi Mayabara, who is generally the protagonist of the game, but not anymore in this particular chapter. There is Rena Ryugu who has a very important part on the first chapter of the whole game, on the first episode. Then you have Mion Sonozaki, Mion Sonozaki, who has a twin sister, Shion Sonozaki, so the person that is talking right now, uh, which are the, the two and third characters uh, that are very important. The Sonozaki is one of those three old families from Inamizawa, and they're supposed to be like the more powerf the most powerful family right now within Inamizawa. It didn't used to be that way, but now they are because we have all the power from being all around the place. Like they, they own like the politics of the certain prefectures that they're in and so forth. And then you have Satoko Ojo, who is another important character. She's kind of like a young kid, which we're probably going to talk in that episode, I assume. And then you have Rika Furude, who is also part of the three oldest family. And she's a, a, a shrine maiden. A lot of people think that she's the reincarnation of Oyashiro Sama, who is like the deity of Inamizawa. And Inamizawa has all those folklore tales about the fact that it used to be named Onigafushi and it was the land of the demons. So that's a little bit of context that I'm bringing here, but let's see what Xion is doing. Which is interesting is that we're talking about an administration office and where actually they needed a key on an administration office was only in, in a certain place which you may hear about on the episode for the game. I feel that it's connected to this. So let's see what's going on. Let's continue the game a little bit here. So before I actually continue, as you can see the, so far that game was always the, can be played the, always the same way. It's just a classic visual novel that is a sound, the name that's a sound novel uh, in this case, or at least uh, Zero Seven Expansion did that. And the interesting thing here is that what you have to understand is that you just read. It's basically reading, reading, reading. But what's interesting into this game is that most of the chapter offers some kind of clue about what really happens. So thanks to that, you can actually try to challenge yourself in a way that makes it a game, thanks to that. But so far, compared to the first four chapters, first four episodes, whatever you want to name that, the system is exactly the same. There's no change into the UI, there's no change into the, the style, in a way, of this game. So if you look at my previous game preview, you can have a little bit more information about what all those things mean on the right side. Alright, let's continue. Maybe I'm just mistaken. Why don't I try the keys one more time? The next moment, I felt a faint vibration in the air. Somebody was walking somewhere in the hallway. If it were a normal situation, I would have known I wouldn't run into them, since the footsteps were very far away. But at the time, I couldn't think calmly. Ah, oh, shit. 
Why am I panicking this much just because of footsteps? Calm down, calm down. I should be feeling excited instead. Calm down, calm down. I just need to do what I have to do. I should ignore the, fo ignore the footsteps because they are not an immediate threat. Threat. Pretend they aren't here. I have to listen for something much more important right now. Ah, oh, shit. This key should be hard and cold, but... It's pliable and hard. It feels like rubber. How could I stick this into the keyhole? Shit, shit, shit. It wasn't the keys that were pliable. It's my fingers that were limp. Ah, shit, shit, shit. Sorry for all this. <laughs> for all this cursing. But that's what's written. The key sprang out of my hand and fell to the floor. It shouldn't have made any sound because it was so pliable, but it made, it made a tremendous metal sound, noise as if somebody pushed over a cupboard. Cling! The sound almost stopped my heart. I felt dizzy for a while. I looked around afterwards to carefully see if I caused any disturbance to the surroundings. Calm down, calm down. Nothing's changed. I don't hear anything. So, am I safe? Calm down, calm down, calm down. Wait, I don't hear anything? What about those footsteps in the distance? Calm down, calm down, calm down. Are they looking for me after they notice the sound? Ah, oh, shit. What is that sound I'm hearing? Is it my sweat dripping on the floor? Shut up, shut up, shut up! How could I hear the sound of my sweat? Calm down, calm down, calm down! Calm the fuck down! I have to clarify. This isn't a prison or a detention center. It's a private school. <laughs> okay, so it's unrelated to anything. Not a normal one, for. It cost a fortune just to get in. It's a boarding school that provides education from elementary school to university. Being for girls only, rather than a school, you could say it's a factory that manufactures ladies. Some of my classmates here have never even used public transportation. Really, it isn't normal. To me, saying how nice to see you instead of just hi is already insane and calling the teachers sisters gives me the creeps i hate the morning and evening prayers to say nothing of a sunday mass i don't want to memorize the bible passage passages and the holy ghost give me rash gives me a rash if i stayed in this institution that's what I call the place. For many years, I'd either go crazy or be brain rushed. Most of the girls choose to be brain rushed, but I can't do that. After all, I was more impressed by the political schemes and international, international trade behind religious propagation than by the love of God which the Bible teaches. Because of that, I'd been treated as a problematic child from the beginning. I experienced lots of disadvantages as a result. I realized that quickly, I realized that quickly, so I superficially pretended to be normal. However, I got tired of acting, so I started to reveal my true self from time to time. I became a problematic child once again. People started to treat me differently once again. It's fun to misbehave, but it wouldn't do anything for me in the long run. So why did I act this way? Why, even though I knew it was going to backfire on me later on? After examining my emotions, I realized that I'd completely had it with my surroundings. 
I was afraid of being brainwashed in this, inst in this institution. I can't live here. I won't let them brush brainwash me. Six months ago, I decided to escape this place. The moment I made up my mind, I started to feel alive again. I acted lady light in order to deceive the sisters. Pretending became fun once I'd set my goal. It gave me the creeps when they told me with smiles that it was God's influence that I started to behave religiously. I laughed at them behind their backs. I took on my classmates' duties in order to understand the layout of the school and the schedules of the staff and guards. I soon found out that the security of the school was immensely tight because there were many daughters of important people living there. The guards walked their beat randomly. There were surveillance cameras everywhere. The system that kept our intruders ironically also worked to prevent escapees. But that excited me instead. I simulated how to avoid all the surveillance in my head many times. I drew an escape route in the corner of my notes during class and tested if it worked. I strove to acquire any necessary skills for, my, for the escape. It was all fun. After all, the situation was cathartic for me. That's who I am. No matter how hard they tried to brainwash me, I'd never change. I'd been waiting for the moment of my escape, preparing physically and mentally. First, I needed the courage to escape. I had to be confident of the plan. I had to think deeply about it. I also needed skills and physical strength. I imagined all the possible obstacles and trained myself. It was funny because I was able to enjoy gym classes. Even the long distance runs. I needed a perfect plan as well as the physical strengths and skills necessary to execute it. Also, supported by those things, I needed determination. I made sure that I had all I needed and executed the plan. I decided to plant a seed in school before the appointed day. The seed was a rumor that one of the male teachers was having a relationship with a student. I won't go into the details now, but that can turn into an enormous problem in this school. The school is limited to girls precisely because their parents want to avoid those kind of problems. Those parents are mostly important people from various positions. If a romance was a fact and was leaked to the public, the principal would have to commit suicide in, suicide in shame. In fact, even that might not be enough. In the world of girls, rumors spread fast, especially when they're separated from boys and are obsessed with dirty thoughts. So, this kind of rumors goes around really quickly. The sisters try to get rid of that kind of rumor, and they warn the students not to be swayed by it. But apparently, they are the ones who are most swayed by those rumors. This means that I managed to make them furtively deal with something shady, without contacting families or the authorities. So, if I disappeared in these circumstances, it would look like I ran away with some teacher. All the male teachers would deny it, of course. However, the school wouldn't believe what they said so easily. After all, there's a dirty rumor going around. By the time the school finds out about my escape, after they eliminate all the other possibilities, I'll be somewhere safe. I tried hard to spread the rumor that I was involved in the forbidden romance as widely as possible. The sisters questioned me a few times, but since the romance was something I'd made up, they couldn't find anything. No matter how hard they tried, 
we couldn't find any evidence. After three months, I was certain that I created a solid foundation. I swapped after dinner to teas with my classmates so that, so that I could adjust my schedule on this day. I was even able to fill them with suspicion about me by doing that. Now, they'll definitely suspect I ran away with some male teacher. Tonight was the night. I began my shows after dinner. After lights out, every, uh, somebody will find out about my disappearance. My generous woodmate would probably wait about ten minutes before she reported me to a sister, but no longer than that. I had about an hour tops. But that's enough for me. I took a step off my regular wood. That was the first step towards my greatest, my greatest escape. I calmed down and thought, the key shouldn't be wrong. This lock is old and firm. Isn't it, isn't it possible that I put the right one in, but the lock was just stiff and I only thought I got the wrong one? I realized that my nervous, nervousness was making me clumsy. The gloves that I'm wearing to avoid leaving fingerprints must be getting in the way too. I should try the keys one more time. I picked the most probable one and gently inserted it into the keyhole. It's stiff. If I twist it too strongly, I might break the key. The moment I thought of giving up, I felt something in my fingertips. The key worked! I slowly opened the door. I could hear the crickets. I don't have to hesitate now, but somehow I'm reluctant to step outside. I can still make excuses up to this point. It might look awkward, but I still can. But if I take a step outside now, there can be no excuse. If the guards find me, they'll take me to the office immediately. There have been escape attempts before. That's not really so strange. I don't think I'm the only Ethan here. It's understandable that there have been people below who couldn't fit in this place. I wonder if it was before instead of below, but that's okay. <laughs> so yeah, the, the version of Manga Gamer do have some typos. On episode 4, there were a lot actually of repetition like the, the, and sometimes some typos here and there and it was a bummer you know because the game is has a great story and when you see typos it kind of make it less serious in a way uh, but you know what it happens when you have a game that is like 30 hours long of, of text or 20 hours long of text only anyway let's go back to Xion's story here so the school is well aware of the possibility of escapees I've heard rumors about what happened to those who were caught while attempting to escape. I don't want to believe any other stories, though. You see, all the school's horror stories involve students who attempted escapes. Whatever, bring it on. I'm not expecting to get a second chance anyway. Second chance anyway. There'll always be one chance. Always be only one chance. Things get serious beyond this door. I psyched myself up and pushed the door open. A strong smell was hanging in the air. Is that normal for the outside? I'd never smelled this strong grassy smell before. Is there something going on? Do I have to be worried of it? Should I go back and wait for another chance? That city. There's nothing strange going on. This smell is nothing I smell every day. Uh, this smell is something I smell every day. I just wasn't aware of it. It's true, isn't it? Even though I pretend to be cool, I'm nothing but a nervous wreck. Calm down. Calm down, Shion. I can rely on the map inside my head from the, from this point onward. 
and research the locations of all the surveillance cameras. I'm confident that I'll be able to avoid all of them, but I'm not sure about the guards. They pick their patrol route randomly after all. I have to take a chance. I can hide myself in most places. But there's an area where there's nowhere, no, nowhere to hide for several meters. I concentrated to keep my senses keen. Well, I have to depend on my luck in the end. Even if I do my best, the guard might find me by mere chance. So by the way, for those who wonder, this music is completely new. I never heard that music before on the previous games. So it does seem that there's new music, but generally it's normal. Most of the games do have at least one new music. And I know that on the responses arc, they started to really have real um, music from composers that they hired. Because on the previous episode, episode 1 to 4, most of the music were not from composers that was hired, it was just free music on the web. Although, I would say the manga gamer version of the game kind of changed some of the music, and I think it was actually by the ask of Yukushi, because when Yukushi released an anniversary box of Higurashi no Nakukoroni containing the 8 episodes, he, apparently there were changes in the music. So maybe that's why, but I'm not 100% sure. Anyway, let's continue uh, the reading here and see if Xion will make it out. If she will escape the sister's uh, school that she's in. On the contrary, I might be able to get away no matter how unwisely I choose to move if I'm lucky. Damn, after all that effort, it just boils down to luck. Haha, <laughs> this is a gamble after all. When I realized that, I got excited. Yes, this is a gamble. I'm trying my luck. This is a game to test the determination to change my life. If somebody failed to escape from this school, that meant they didn't have enough luck to survive in the real world. But I'm different. I'm going to get out of here. I'm testing my luck. Here goes, Shion. I ignore the noisy bugs and concentrated only on suspicious sounds. I heard no threats. The loudest sound wasn't the bugs, it was my own heartbeat. Crunch. Even my own footsteps were so loud they could break my eardrums. With each and every step, my overactive imagination tormented me with premonition of unexpected run-ins with the guards. Run-ins with guards. Countless times that torture grew too hard to bear and I thought of running. But if I broke into a run, the noise I made would only draw suspicion. If anyone heard running at a time and place where people shouldn't be, they would realize something abnormal was happening. But if the first step they heard were just walking, then they'd likely think nothing of it. Of course, I don't plan on even letting them hear those first steps. I try to extend my senses to get as much information as possible. I didn't sense anyone's presence. I might have felt safer if I heard a guard in the distance. I'm worried that my senses might not be keen enough to detect anything, everything. Somebody might be right behind me, without me being aware of it. I didn't want to make any noise, so I stopped from time to time. It's like I'm constantly fidgeting. To stop or to run. Somebody within urged me to choose from either one. I can't choose to stop. I have to keep going quickly and stealthily. I'm already risking so much just by being here. Running, of course, would be absurd. Ah, I know that. The urge to run continued to bug me. My head was filled with those thoughts as I went through this dangerous territory. I succeed in passing through without running into anybody. 
I couldn't help but sit for a moment and exhale the rotten hair from my lungs. My negative thoughts vanished quickly. Just a little more to go. Just a little more! Just through that brush over there is the fence that separates this place and the outside world. Once again, I strongly felt the urge to run. I suppressed that desire and carefully tackled the final step. The beautiful looking fence didn't seem designed to prevent escapes. While I was working, well, while I was working, oh geez, while I was worried that somebody might see me climbing up the fence, it fortunately didn't happen. It's even possible that this fence might have a touch sensor. It's too late now. It doesn't mean anything now since I'm already climbing up. From the top, the fence seemed about 7 feet high. I have to go down carefully, just like when I climbed up. I knew that logically, but I couldn't think that way anymore. I chose to jump off with no hesitation. Of course, I regretted my decision during the fall. I got scared because the flight was longer than I expected. I didn't land beautifully. I felt onto my butt. But there was nobody around to laugh and I didn't have time to be embarrassed. I looked around to see if anybody heard my landing. Even the crickets were interested in the sound I made. I felt relieved. I looked at my watch. 5 minutes till 8 p.m. It was just a 15 minute escape. Putting, putting a number to it really made it obvious how short it had been. Looking back, most of the time I was just asking myself questions and hesitating. I guessed I worried too much. But I can't be too relaxed just yet. There's no guarantee that I fooled all the cameras. This place is on a bank. There won't be a fire alarm going off even if the guards didn't see me. Or did see me. It's possible they're rushing this way right now. I can't enjoy the air of the freedom yet. Come on, Shion, go out! <laughs> I hid myself in the darkness and waited. There's still time left until the rendezvous. The rendezvous. Alright, we finished the first part of this uh, section. And it's funny, they actually have a new sign. We didn't used to have the sign in Japanese. Alright, I think that we're gonna stop here. So I just wanted to show you a little bit of a preview of the game. We already did 33 minutes after all. This episode is a little bit special because it's actually a real answer to one of the four previous episodes. I know that because of the anime. I'm not going to say more about it, but you should probably play this one if you played any of the fourth episode before. Obviously because of that, it's maybe the one that gives the less answers in a way, or the most simple answers in a way. Because, after all, there's three episodes left after this one. <laughs> so it's better to have most of the answers, obviously, during the last two episodes. So, I never played the full game, I just watched the anime. And I know that the anime may have skipped a lot of things. I don't even remember having Shion escaping a school in the anime. Maybe it happened, but I don't recall that at all. But Anyway, I'm gonna stop here. I hope you liked that little preview. I hope you like all the preview I did of the Igorashi franchise so far. Probably the episode 1 is the one that I talked the most about everything that you can do with the UI and all those kind of stuff. Episode 2 may have some of that too. But then after probably episode 3 and episode 4 is probably the same way that I did it here where I just try to say what's written on the screen. <laughs> I know I'm not an actor, so I apologize in advance for any um, stutter. Um, how do you say that? 
I don't know how you say that in English. I'm sorry, but that uh, um, any like mistakes that I did, obviously when I was reading, uh, I was swinging around. But I hope that it gives you a little bit of an idea of all the little change that happened in this game, which are not that big. You saw that the title screen is very different, and obviously the new name, which is Sky, uh, in it, and and that's about it. <laughs> All right, thank you everybody so much for watching Tosser Show. I hope that you liked it. Please follow my uh, Facebook page and please uh, subscribe if you like those kind of game previews. That's what I'm doing the most right now. And I will see you soon. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you.